Welcome to Prompt Gods, a 12-part series taking a look at the AI art world and the prolific illustrators that have unintentionally become some of the most used prompt words within the AI art community. Greg Rukowski is a traditional and digital illustrator who's worked with Wizards of the Coast and created artwork for Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, and a bunch of other things. He's done loads. He's so well versed in the craft. He's been teaching thousands online with his various learning resources and masterclasses. If you're looking to broaden your knowledge on art fundamentals and traditional to digital techniques, Greg is your guy. His journey into the digital art space begun when deciding which art school to go to. Greg picked up a graphics tablet and started taking a look at the digital art scene, specifically concept art websites like CG Hub. He quickly realised that he'd be able to make art digitally and after completing his first artwork in less than a day, he decided to make the switch from the traditional medium to digital. But he never forgot his traditional roots and continued to blend the old with the new. To this day, Greg still practices traditional painting and states that working with a canvas and paint is more like a meditation when creating. The lack of room for error focuses the mind and gives the artist a different and sometimes more valuable experience. It really is no surprise that other artists want to emulate his style. So let's take a look at how AI is interpreting it. Now, the assumption with AI art is that it directly copies specific parts of an image from an existing artwork and then pastes it into the new piece. This isn't actually how it works though. It is true that the original datasets are built up of millions of online images and the text data that corresponds to them, but when you type a prompt into an AI art generator, the image is manifested from the latent space of a deep learning model. Yup, I was confused when I heard that as well. But, in short, these deep learning models train themselves through trial and error, putting pixels with random RGB values next to each other while searching for a correlation with the text data provided. Eventually, the AI starts to see patterns and understands how to build compositions out of the input words. An insanely large amount of variables are being cross-correlated and assessed by the AI when it starts building an image. And through a process called diffusion, it begins generating visuals first from noise and then it slowly fills in the pixels around it until it gives you an image. And in reality, it's not that far off from how people operate when creating things without it. You could argue that our life experiences and the environment around us contribute to our own deep learning network. We're able to look upon several things for reference and then merge them into a new idea. AI essentially becomes the creative labourer and you become an art director with these tools. But that doesn't solve the issues artists are going to come up against with this new technology. At the moment, there are no clear laws around copyright and AI. I imagine in the future we'll look towards the music industry and move to treat it more like how audio sampling is treated, but the law has a lot of catching up to do. So, at the moment, the best thing you can do is support these original artists by following their social pages, study their style so you're aware when people have borrowed it. You can find links to Greg's social pages below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode of Prompt Gods.